Echo Haven started 18 years ago. A group of families that were working together and uh, volunteering our labor on the first uh, sustainable house in Calgary. Um, we became friends, we started talking, we started developing a vision for Echo Haven, mainly because there was no options in Calgary for building a green home, so we figured we had to do it ourselves. So we ended up buying this piece of property, six and a half acres, setting out the vision in terms of what we needed to do, uh, what we wanted to do on the land, and we came up with this idea of living lightly on the land. The whole idea was to do something entirely different and just have some other options. Uh, we're a little bit tired of you know, the same waste and the same kind of uh, gluttonous houses that use a lot of energy and a lot of water and we wanted to do something a little bit different. Um, all the lots have guaranteed south exposure, um, so uh, there's no gas to the property. Everyone has to, first of all, use passive solar heating as a strategy, so everyone has access to put windows on the south side. Um, and everyone has to look after their heating to some extent, anyway. Um, the other re the requirements to build here um, are that you have to collect your and reuse your rainwater. Uh, because part of our stormwater management, we have no stormwater leaving the site in a pipe. It's all 100% retained on site. I think it was one of the first developments in Calgary where um, we retained all the stormwater on site. Um, so retaining the stormwater not only preserves the ponds that we have here and the tree stands, um, it also reduces uh, end of pipe costs. Pre-development, we looked at the stormwater flows on the site, um, where the water went to, how much, what the frequency was of storms, and we tried to mimic that for the post development. Um, when you do the development, you have mainly the hard surfaces like roads and the rooftops and the houses, which contributes to higher uh, runoff. So, if we're going to imitate, mimic the pre development and post development stormwater characteristics, we kind of had to take this, the roof areas out of the calculation. Um, we wanted to reuse rainwater anyway, so if we took the rainwater, put it in a cistern, and used it in the house, then we would achieve that purpose of, of uh, retaining all the stormwater on site. Um, so we do have a cistern which captures almost 90% of the rainfall that falls on the roof in an average year. That rainwater is, is held in the cistern um, year-round, so we capture snow melt as well. Uh, the rainwater is uh, treated. Uh, it has first, first treatment is the downspout filters, which have a uh, 30 micron filter screen in the bottom that takes all the leaves and debris that comes off the roof. Um, then the water after that goes into the cistern. When it's pumped out of the cistern, uh, we have a 3 micron charcoal filter that helps to clean it up for, especially for washing machine use, and, um, and then an ultraviolet filter to disinfect it. So we've got lots of treatment for the rainwater. And what we did was we had written into our approvals from the city that we were going to do rainwater harvesting and what it was going to be used for. So it actually stipulated that we were going to use it for the outside hose bibs for gardening, for toilet flushing, and for the washing machine. We think that it'll probably save, in, I mean toilet flushing alone, according to the national average, somewhere between 25% 20, of water use. So between outside gardening, the toilet flushing, the clothes washing, uh, we hope to achieve about a 40-50% reduction in potable city treated water use. The other thing that is really important is, is how we behave, how we react with our home. Um, so there's many energy cons conserving um, things to think about. I have to train my kids to shut off lights when they leave a the room, um, not keep the refrigerator door open too long. Um, we gave them timers for the showers so they can take a three minute shower and the buzzer goes off and they better be out of the shower after the three minutes are up. So I think there's still a feeling that um, these are difficult things to do, especially doing a high performance home, but we're, we're going to prove that a high performance home doesn't cost that much more.